Hello everybody and welcome to episode four, season two, Alexis Sales Cyclogeography. And we are at Hen Hill Velodrome. Now, the history of cycle racing in Britain is quite an interesting one because in the 1880s, people were crazy about bicycles. It's hard to believe, you know, people could travel further and um, mate with people further. So it actually led to an improvement in the uh, the general health of the population and uh, less hereditary diseases. And people were absolutely crazy about it. I mean, the bicycle was like a combination of like the iPhone and the home computer and the motor car people. But cycle racing itself was actually banned in Britain in the 1880s because people in villages objected to big, huge crowds of cyclists hurtling through their villages. Now they used to um, secretly still race in the early mornings and what they used to do was time trials. And that's why Britain for many years didn't have any competitors or many competitors in like the Tour de France because we had no history of road racing in this country. All that we had was time trialing which is where a single individual competes against the clock or people head out every minute. Eventually that changed. But what we did have was places like this, cycle tracks where thousands Hundreds of thousands, tens of millions of people would come here and watch cyclists race round and round these tracks uh, using uh, fixed wheel bicycles, no brakes, uh, all kinds of tandems, uh, paced by motorbikes. And this was, this was it. I mean, this was, you know, this was coming here and watching a bloke in a woolen outfit with hobnail boots on a bicycle made out of um, iron was like going to a Bruce Springsteen concert for the people of the 1900s. Anyway, let's head off into town. Oh yeah, thought I was just riding along, I've forgotten I'm, I'm hosting this video. Sorry about that, I was just, I was miles away. I am miles away from my house. Uh, big houses, wealthy people. Stuff like that. To a degree, starting to get used to the experience of riding these things. I guess if you want to get places in a an eco kind of way, and yeah. There's the budgeons. 
Do you have budgeons where you live? They're Britain's most, 17th most popular supermarket chain, usually in posh areas these days. Uh, What supermarket do you have? Where do you go? I'll tell you my favorite, I'll give you my, oh, I, try, I was gonna tell you this story. I was, t I was telling a friend about something weird that had happened to me. Nice cat there. And um, he said, oh, I'll tell you something really weird. I, I actually don't, well, it's kind of weird, but uh, I think in a good way. So he said he met this guy who told him, who does videos on YouTube. And he's kind of a bit of an anarchist kind of guy. And what he does, <laughs> these, what he does for these videos is he goes to a gig, right? And then he goes in the bathroom of the gig. And you know, they're like, you know, toilets, bathrooms have always got, um, uh, uh, fans in them, you know, and the, the like a you know extractor fan, and the extractor fan, the grill, yeah, the the, the grill, as it were, the of the extractor fan is always clogged up with dust. So what this guy does, he goes to a gig, and he goes in the, and he's, he's filming this, recording this on uh, YouTube. He goes in the, um, he goes in the bathroom while the gig's going on. And he cleans with just like a little tissue, he cleans the grill of dust. And it doesn't last long, and it's, that's what he does. I think that's the most brilliant idea. That's true, that's what, you know, I think that's the, I think that's like, I really, when I heard about it, I thought that is a fantastic idea. And I don't really know why completely. But a man goes to a gig, goes in the bathroom the gig and cleans the grill of the extractor fan. Oh, this is a, as Paul Simon sang, this is an age of miracles and wonder. Going up a hill now, the bike is taking it completely in its stride. So easy. Uh, very little effort involved. Sorry yeah. to invade your film. Yes. But uh, we're going to turn right here. Okay. And then it's just follow the road. I all know. The I know where I am. Telephone yeah. Castle. Yeah, I know where I am. All right then. Yeah. London and then half big. It's lots of like little houses and lots of blocks of flats. With a ladder and some glasses you could see to acne marshes. If it wasn't for the ashes in between And if it's up the marshes A more modern version would be All the sourdough bakeries and the art centres And the music venues and the bicycle shops In between and the graffiti artists and the studios of the painters, but only the really successful ones, like my friend Jock McFadden. And the houses designed by Piers Goff in between. 
with a ladder and some glasses you could see to Acne Marshes if it wasn't for the Deliveroo riders in between. King's College Hospital coming heading into Camberwell. Used to be, uh, you know, used to be one of those areas that used to be really rough and it's still sort of rough, but is now, um, you know, vibey. Lots of uh, music venues and. Peter Richardson, a comic strip, used to live down there in Love Walk. This is uh, Centre of Camberwell, vibrant, lively, 24 hours a day, there's always something happening. It's, you know, it's a very different, it's a very different city, South London. I'm not entirely sure where I am, but um, I think I'm heading back towards my house. Have I lost Salau? I thought I'd lost you. You can never lose me. <laughs> I'll be with you till you die. It's like, like a in, uh, in uh, oh, no, that's called the bike. That, oh yeah, that's, that's where we should be. That's where we should be going. In far from adding oh, Jalal said, "I'll never be able to lose him." It rides if. Far from the madding crowd, where um, is it Gabriel Oak says, Wherever you are, there I'll be. Wherever I, I am, you will be. Actually, I might have got that wrong. I think I might have got nearly all of that wrong. It does make cycling, it's a different experience, you know. See a lot less effort.
Oh, that's right, I was going to list my favourite supermarkets. Waitrose, or, or in the north, Booths. Um, I'm quite fond, I was quite fond of an Asda. There's an Asda around here somewhere. I'm very fond of Old Kent Road. Oh, the Old Kent Road, yeah. That's where I go. Is that where you go? This oh, is where I lived for six months before oh, right. I moved. It's right here. Oh, you, oh, it used to be off. We used to, me and Linda used to go on a Sunday to that Asda. All for the way morning. Yeah, for the morning out. Um, yeah, because it was people of many nations. Often women, African women in there church finery and yeah it was you know it was like it's like the world should be all nations all colors all creeds mixing together in harmony and buying like three pizzas for a pound something. used to have cheap diesel as well One five two for diesel, point eight there, which is quite dear really. It'd be a lot cheaper at that Asda on the on the old Ken Road. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, these lights! Still on the old Camberwell Road. It's a very nice house down there. I think this is actually the Walworth Road now, isn't it? It's become the Walworth Road. I remember somebody telling me once, a good place back in the 80s, a good place to come and get a shooter in a pub on the Walworth Road. Good place to get a shooter. And we're heading back towards the Elephant and Castle now. Uh, driver of that Previa gave me a wave. Waving went me on. Similarly, this uh, Range Rover's letting me through, which uh, is all, you know, it's as it should be. Here we are, back before we've gone here and hill to the Elephant and Castle. Elephant Castle is transformed from when I knew it. Uh, it used to be dog rough. Now it looks like downtown Yokohama. Is that a good thing? Some ways yes, some ways no. See ya!